Welcome to Shorty Supercoach. What's going on, guys? Taking a look at Port Adelaide today. Um, but just a couple of quick things. Exciting announcement you might have seen on my channel or radio. <laughs> or radio? What the fuck is that? Um, already, um, I'm on TikTok. Shorty is on TikTok. We had probably a couple of videos out. I've definitely got one out right now. And i uh, got another one out probably tomorrow. So, yeah, I was... Yeah, happy to get involved because, let's face it, TikTok is the new world now and um, I'll still be putting plenty into YouTube, but just wanted to join the real world and uh, just get a bit updated on the channel. Bit of new content. If you if you found this channel off the back of TikTok, let me know. Um, if you've been watching this channel for years and already seen the TikTok, also let me know. Would uh, love your support. So yeah, that's something just a bit new. And thanks to a couple of people that let me know. Just a few audio issues i think here at shorty super coach i don't think we're getting uh, a couple of times i've heard that the volume is a bit low so i'm playing around with it i'm hearing you um even though you guys might not be hearing me at the uh ultimate levels i'm working on it we are working on it. we've got a good mic so it's just something in the technical elements that i'm just gonna have to have a little figure and play around with but thank you for letting me know so um, quick thing, you know, I like to, before we dive into the Supercoach content, I like to just bring a little bit of something else to the table. No stories today. I've got a couple um, that I do want to tell you soon, though. Um, but I went out for breakfast a few weeks ago and just ordered my acai bowl. Yeah, it was $24. I don't mind. It's, it's a nice acai bowl. Happy to do it. Got to the counter... Thank you, sir. That'll be twenty six forty. I was like, twenty six forty. Didn't think much of it at the time, and thought, oh, maybe I just misread it. Went back um, to the old menu, and I just, you know, it's a couple of bucks, whatever. But I was like, huh, no, it was definitely twenty four. Saturday surcharge. What's this? What is Shorty slow to the world, or or is this something new? Has this snuck up on you? Because it snuck up on me. A Saturday surcharge. Now, we all know for years, public holiday surcharge. Fair enough. You're paying your staff more. Fair enough, I get it. But even Sunday, you know, occasionally might see it. But a Saturday surcharge. I'm not so sure about that. A 10% whack on me acai bowl. Fuck, I don't know about that, mate. Build it into your prices, for goodness sake. I want to have me acai bowl Saturday morning at normal price. Jesus. $21, I must admit. Add Nutella for an extra $3. It's a crucial thing to do. Anyway, let me know if that's caught you off guard or if Shorty is just a bit slow on the uptake. Let's take a look at Port Adelaide, shall we? And we've only got a few names, but they're all young, up-and-coming guns, and I think two of them have to be in your teams. More, oh, fuck. More specifically, your forward lines. Going to start with Zach Butters, who has been an absolute roller coaster for us over the journey. There is no doubt about that. Zach has caused us some pain. Um, let's take a look at you know this year, 2020, when he averaged 87. Everyone thought 2021, get on him, he's going to explode, and he did for a serious amount of time. Okay, first week, 163 in the second, then a 55, a 96, and he gets a he gets injured. Now, this 96 was in a half of football. I remember watching this in a half of footy. Let me just uh, view the advance. This will be a time on ground in the 40s. 57, okay, I lie. I swear to God it was in the second quarter or something. But nonetheless, it's insane numbers. But he returned and just wasn't quite the same player. And then in um, 2022, again... Many of us thought Zach Butter's great option, and for at times he was. You know, he started brilliantly, but then we've seen some real indifferent games in round three and four. He was back in round five. He was gone in round six. You know, this roller coaster of 50s every second week. And then he caught fire throughout the middle period, and, and then all of a sudden a 60, an 87, a 68, you know, didn't turn up for a month, and then ends the year with five centuries. So I can't get a read on him. But I will be starting him. Look, we've talked a long time about Zach Butters developing into the player 
um, that we've always thought he could be. And, and sometimes he finds a way to get niggles and head knocks and a bit of a slight of frame, but he throws himself around. I think he will find himself in that midfield because sometimes those scores have been not just injury affected, but opportunity affected as well. But for me, I think you're getting him at a reasonable price, to be fair. I think at the point price he is with 96, is pretty good. Um, I feel like he'll average 100, and I just reckon he's an up-and-coming star that we won't see in our forward lines all too often. I think he'll become a, a genuine mid next year. He'll play some forward time because he's elusive like that, but I think Port are taking their game to the next level, and it's been driven by these young guys. I should say... The, I don't actually think of taking it to the next level, but their endeavour is to do that off the back of these young players. Now, um, all of them are quite young players that I've selected here. So let's dive in to Connor Rosie as well. And this bloke equally has been a bit of a tease. How many times have we said the sentence, Jay Port got a lot to look forward to with Rosie, Butters and Dersma? You know, and they've had in different years and... Rosie was no exception. I mean, look at this. Many thought he could have broken out any number of the last couple of years, and it did not look like it last year. Look at this start. And and most of this is positional. You know, he wasn't getting the opportunity, but when he did get thrown in the midfield, and that's reflected in the clearance numbers as it really does start to be much more consistent, particularly... You know, you got five clearances here, six here, you know, none here, but not sure what he was doing that day. Still scored 98. But look, he won the best and fairest and just showed that he could be so damaging. He hits the scoreboard, finds plenty of the ball, and there's no doubt he'll be in that Port Adelaide midfield. He's showed that he is a mainstay in there and must start in there next year. A little bit like Butters, you'll get him at what I feel is an unders price now. 93 average, you know, I think, you look what he averaged in the last bloody, after the buy, you know, you can do the maths, I mean, that's big, he, he had a 67 and a 76, another 76 in round 13, but the rest were above 90, with some whopping scores, look at that one to end the year, look at this in round 17, like, he can impact the match massively, so I think he's a, a definite, well, not so much an out and out lock, but He's one of the biggest um, inclusions into my team. You know, I think he's got a huge amount of upside. Definitely could average three figures next year. Now, a fella that I'm not as sure about what's going to happen, Jason Horn Francis. He's created a few enemies in his short amount of time in the game. There's no doubt about that. Number one pick, North Melbourne. Now he is home in South Australia with the Port Adelaide Football Club. Fair to say there's not too much love lost between North fans and Jason Horn Francis, but he'll be looking to put all that behind him and play some really good footy. Now, he didn't play much good footy last year. He did have some promising games, and we shouldn't be too harsh on him. Not everyone can be Nick Dacos. He did show some pretty promising signs and was a reasonable cash cow for us, but the latter half of the year was littered with indecision, um, you know, attacks on his character. Was he doing the right things? Was he happy to be told what to do, etc., etc.? Lots of stories and all the concerns about his future did come true because he left the club. Where does he fit into Port Adelaide? I think he'll get opportunities in the midfield. I'm not sure how... I don't think he'll be full-time because you've got to think you've got Butters and Rosie. You've still got Boak and Wines and you've still got the likes of Willem Drew and... And I'm sure there's some others that float in there from time to time. So he's probably six or seven down the pecking order, maybe five at best. So that doesn't lend itself to full-time mid. Certainly midfield will be his primary position. But I could see him lifting his average beyond 85. But I just wanted to put him in here because he is available as a forward. Um, I think he's about 360... Um, you can get him in that forward line, which which is just probably something that I'll try and find out how much he's worth. Um, it just whenever you see a player like this with such potential, likely to play mainly midfield, you gotta wonder when we can get him available as a forward. It's it's worth talking about him. 
Um, could be worth talking about a different internet provider as I am just slowly getting onto the page here. Oh, we're getting there, we're getting there. There we go. Um, so there he is, 348. He's got that dual position, massive upside. So I, I think the forward line is littered with players like Butters, like Rosie, like Fife, like Cunnington, like Dunkley, you know, Taranto. There's heaps. I don't see Horn Francis as a guy that we've got to select, but could definitely see him lifting his average by at least 20 points per game. Very, very um, achievable. Josh Sin. I don't always talk about rookies in this segment. I try to sort of leave it, particularly with draftees and that, but I just thought I'd chuck him in there because I don't know if he's talked about as much as some others. I may be wrong, but I think he was probably a guy that we thought we'd see a lot more of. But conveniently for us, we didn't. Now he's at 123K, mid, forward, thank you very much. I think as long as he has a decent preseason, I feel like he'll be a massive chance for the best 22. And I think if he does get best 22, I think we could actually see him have quite a reasonable scoring ability at his best. Like he'll have inconsistencies like any young player. But... He is known for a bit of a dashing defender. High pick. You know, what was he? Pick 12. For whatever reason, we didn't see too much of him last year. Port fans will be able to tell me more. I'm pretty sure he got injured. And, you know, it's a tough team to break into, which it will be again. But I'd say he will be one good preseason away from playing 16-plus games, which would be great for us. So I uh, just wanted to chuck him in there just to keep on your watch list for the preseason. But... Um, yeah, going to wrap it up there. A bit of a late night video. Shorty's just going to probably chuck on the tennis just for a little bit, pour myself a cheeky little Milo and call it a night. But um, yeah, like I said, get around the TikTok if that's your vibe. If you're a vibe and YouTube sort of first and then go for your life, stick um, stick to the YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. But whichever way you want to um, ingest or digest a bit of Shorty content, then just... Pick and choose whichever one. Oh, shorty, just, just wind it up, mate. I'm just waffling now. All right, good night. Cheers. Thank you.